Hi everyone, welcome back to the Cocktail Vlog. I'm Steve the Bartender and today I'm making a Brandy Cruster. So the Brandy Cruster was first created by Joseph Santini, an Italian bartender in New Orleans back in 1850, 1850s, roughly, give or take a few years. It actually predates the Sazerac, which I believe was made in 1853. And the Sazerac is well known, it's like synonymous with New Orleans, but uh, the Brandy Cruster, uh, there was a, a big outbreak of Flexera, Flexera which is like a, an insect or an aphid that completely decimated the wine industry over in France. So acquiring a bottle of cognac or a bottle of brandy over in the States, apparently during the late 1800s was incredibly hard. So the brandy cruster fell into obscurity along with a bunch of other cognac and brandy cocktails. And it wasn't until, you know, early 2000s that the brandy cruster sort of got revived in that cocktail renaissance when all these new, new cocktail bars were popping up those horrible 80s and 90s cocktails started to be forgotten about. Now, people still love trekking them. You know what I'm talking about, the cocktail renaissance, all these really nice bars started opening and they were looking back in, in cocktail guides and finding these cocktails that hadn't been made for a very long time. And Brandy Crustle was one of those. So there's plenty of different recipes out there. They all call for different portions or different measurements of your, your cognac, um, your, your orange curacao, and some don't call for a maraschino liqueur, some call for a gum syrup in, in, instead. What is a gum syrup? Well, a gum syrup is a simple syrup with the addition of gum arabic. So it just adds a nice viscosity to your syrup. These ratios, obviously you can vary. If you Google it, if you look at imbibe, you look at punch, they're all gonna be different. So basically try the recipe uh, and tweak it to your liking. But today I'm just gonna make a middle of the road brandy cruster that's gonna be reliable and then you can tweak it based on your liking. So first I wanna start by peeling the, the lemon from my glass because the, the classic Brandy Cruster has a huge big lemon rind, or lemon twist. I don't know, you can't really call it a twist. A swath. Swath? Yeah, really big lemon swath that kind of sits inside the glass. You'll see. And I find that the Y pillar, OXO Y pillar, is going to be too thin when you peel. So if you want to use this Bosca cheese slicer, I've talked about this many times. It was Jeffrey Morgenthaler who first recommended it many times on the channel. A cheese slicer gets a nice thick piece of citrus. Takes off uh, plenty of pith as well, which gives that some structure. So it will uh, sit in the glass nicely. Very roughly cut, like so. It's got plenty of pith on the background. I'm fine with that. And eventually that's gonna sit inside the glass. And you wanna make sure you do that first because you're gonna use this lemon to extract your juice. I'm gonna set the lemon aside, grab my tin, and one minute into the video, finally get started on the drink. So today I'm measuring two ounces, 60 ml of cognac. So I'm using Pierre Ferrand, Cru de Cognac, that's the amber cognac, that's how you pronounce it. Half an ounce, 15 mil of dry curacao. Now I did try this, I'm a jovial at the moment because I have tried about four of these so far. I uh, did have a little bit of a comparison between orange liqueurs. I tried it with Cointreau, eh, Cointreau's a little bit too sweet. It's got a higher sugar content. This is a little bit drier. Still a liqueur, still sweet, but less sweet than Cointreau. And I tried it with Clement as well, which is a French Caribbean liqueur. It's got some spices in there. Interesting, but I think the um, Pierre Ferrand dry curacao works better for this particular drink. Half an ounce, 15 ml. And then you have Luxardo Maraschino liqueur. So I'm doing a quarter ounce, seven and a half mil. Now, if you want to, like I said, you can adjust any of these ingredients. This is probably one of the ingredients that you want to adjust if you do. Many recipes call for only a bar spoon, so more, more like five mil or just under one sixth of an ounce. All depends on your personal preference, how sweet you like it, and if you like that nutty cherry characteristic that the maraschino gives off. One or two dashes of Angus or bitters. Two, I'm going to, and we're gonna give this a really thick sugar rim. So don't be afraid to like completely coat the glass with lemon juice. And if you want to, to make it easy for yourself, put this on a plate. This is just silly, but it works. We'll get there. Now give it a tap to get off all the excess. It's not the prettiest, but it'll do. Now, onto the lemon juice. You wanna measure three quarters of an ounce, 22.5 mil, a little bit more. Have that straightened. So ordinarily, my go-to recipe actually calls for a little bit less of the cognac. Because I'm bumping the cognac up today, I'm gonna add to the viscosity of the drink. It is gonna be a little bit sweeter, but I'm just gonna add a scant bar spoon of uh, Demerara gum syrup. This one's by Liver & Co. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Scant measurements always blows my mind because measurement is measurement. And then you say scant, so it's just like just shy of it. Um, but anyways, a little bit of gum syrup adds to the texture, adds that viscosity to the drink. Gonna add ice, 
and shake for 10 to 12 seconds. I'm also adding a couple of cubes into my glass to chill it down a little bit. It's gonna be easier if you add it into the fridge, but just keep in mind that you don't wanna obviously moisten the glass because you've got the sugar rim, it's gonna wet the sugar, and it's, yeah, can be a little bit messy. But shake the cocktail, 10 to 12 seconds. Oh, my glass has a very slight chill to it, and I'm going to strain into the glass. Now, of course, you can add your garnish inside the glass before you strain the drink, but I find that it keeps getting in the way. And this particular glass doesn't really hold the, the big giant swath that well, so I've added a little slit into the side, and I'm just going to just sort of hold it on the edge like so. How does that? Does that look okay, Kat? It's rustic. It's a cocktail from the 1850s, so the more rustic, the better. This Libby glass is really cool. I think it's quite suitable, you know, to that kind of era. So there you have a classic Brandy Cruster. Cheers. Excellent drink. Cognac forward. Um, it's got a nice texture to it from the addition of the gum syrup. Very citrusy. And it's also got this like little undertone, this nuttiness, which comes from the maraschino liqueur. I think the sugar rim is crucial you get that sweetness that kind of balances out the drink i mean you, you've obviously got the sugar content from these two liqueurs but i think the, the sugar on the edge is quite welcome and then that's the last thing that you taste as well you get the cognac up front you get the nuttiness from the maraschino and then you just get this like sweetness that just sort of the end is about on your palate thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for my next cocktail video cheers